So I came across this sketch the other day on Simcom or it was Pinterest. I'm not sure. I'm always on those sites. But anyway, I came across this and I thought it's uh, it's got a maturity about it that I that it spoke to me. So I wanted to use this model to illustrate building a model in ZBrush using the topology brush and progressing all the way to a finished sculpture. I may go into building the wheels, etc., and then putting it inside of an environment. I'm not sure how far I'm taking it. In any case, it's going to be a multi-part project and maybe three, four parts to the project. But I want to pause and say that I, I'd love to give credit to the guy who, who created this sketch. I'll leave his uh, contact information or link or portfolio down in the comments section below. So anyways, let's get started. So I start out by importing a basic cube in the scene and then importing the image inside of the draw menu, maybe the left, right slot. And once it's in there, I can then flip it, scale it, whatever I need to do in order to orient it right. Now I'll scale the, the geometry up, the basic block that I put in there. And it's pretty thick. It doesn't really matter how thick it is. All it is is something to stick the uh, topology brush geometry to. So I'll grab that brush and begin to transcribe the lines, the outlines, the inlines, etc., of the model. And then now as I crisscross and hatch, you can see that the topology is being created. Now it's really just a simulation of the topology. It's not really there until the very end until I actually tap the screen. But once it's all there, we'll get there. So a little bit more to go. So now um, I'm just going to create my brush, tap the screen, and then I'll, I, I get this this topology with some thickness. And now because the block was that I started on was off centered, I have to now center this geometry, recenter it back over the screen or back over the image to make sure that I'm following it. Increase the thickness of it and then I flip it so I will get a center line. And that's really all I did. I did that just to get that center line. And then now it's taking the move to and I'm going to uh, go to the transform and modifier and make sure that that's only on one direction. We're going to keep the movement of the, the brush to one direction. Here I'm masking the wheel lips so that while I'm moving the main body, those will stay in the same location. So as you can see, as I move that body inward, those wheel lips stayed outward. That automatically gives me the uh, some sort of wheel lip or wheel flare and then now I'll do the same pretty much for this lower character line rocker line and I'll use the um, clip curve and pull it outward so that gives me the the basics of uh, the form and now just again using the move brush and restraining it to the X direction in this case Again, that's going to the transform modifiers menu and then constraining it to the axis that you need it. In this case, it's the X direction. And now as I move that, I know that I'm not destroying the side view of those points. And this is just now really just roughing in the topology uh, and making sure the sections make some sort of sense as I progress. I'm keeping in mind the sketch that I'm using to inform how I'm moving the uh, the points here. Don't worry about how coarse the mesh is. This will get smooth really, really fast using dynamic topology. But I'm also want to point out that I'm using the crease, the crease brush. You can see some of the lines or the edge loops have a darker line. Really what that is, is a line with like two rows of dots on both sides of that edge loop. And they seem darker from this distance, but um, that helps me to, when I use dynamic topology, to keep those lines very crisp. And, uh, and also going moving forward, it also helped me to create some 
bevels wherever I need to in a controlled fashion. So again, just constantly moving these around, blocking this out. Uh, now this is dynamic topology and you can see how smooth it is. Now I'm gonna actually take the dynamic topology upward, the smooth shader, so that when I smooth it, it's a little bit more smoother uh, than it was originally. I'm gonna delete the, uh, the crease in the middle so that we can see it. You see how smooth this is? So still moving this thing around and um, just getting it just right putting a crease right in that lower character line so we can see that very clearly. And I'm constantly, again, moving it around so I can compare the line relationships of everything that's uh, relevant. Here, uh, I created another edge loop so I can create a, a lip around the wheel well, and that can remain really hard so we can get that wheel lip just in there. You can see it's starting to take shape, that little flat. Just pulling everything back. I like using, I like ZBrush in this stage of modeling because using the move brush is so fluid as opposed to getting out um, a translating to which you can only move in one direction at a time usually and one point at a time, unless you're using some sort of um, fall off. But, but this is so dynamic, it is so fluid. I love using the move to and shaping these large polys. So we're approaching um, the end of part one and uh, a little bit more of this as we move into part two.